Hi, and welcome to this lesson on Born Harvest Cycles. We're going to introduce the topic. We're going to do some more calculations in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, or the previous two lessons, we learned about the definitions of enthalpy change of formation, enthalpy change of combustion, atomization, bond enthalpy, ionization energies, and electron affinities. So a lot of things are covered in that previous lesson. Make sure that you've covered that first and learned those definitions before moving on to this topic. Born Harbour Cycles and Hess's Law. Now, many of you will have come across Hess's Law in AS. So we're just doing some more application of this. So just like Hess cycles, Born Harbour Cycles, they're thermochemical cycles that include every enthalpy change involved in an ionic compound formation process. So there's a slight difference. In the same case as when we looked at Hess cycles, lattice enthalpies cannot be measured directly. That's why we're using a Born Harbour cycle. And a lot of the principles are similar, but we've just got a lot more definitions to put in. So the cycles are bigger. So these Born Harbour cycles depend on Hess's law. Let's have a reminder of that law. So it states that the total enthalpy change of a reaction is the same independent of the route taken. And if you have the values for all of the stages of a Born Harbour cycle, but you're missing one value, you can use all of the known values to calculate the unknown value, which is the principle of Hess's law. This is a slight difference with Born Harbour cycles. The direction of the arrows as you draw them on your paper is very, very relevant. With Hess's cycles, we could orientate them however we wanted if we drew them. Some people did them algebraically. Either way, with Born Harbour cycles, we're going to be drawing them and downward arrows show negative values and upward arrows show positive values. So downward arrows are obviously exothermic, upwards endothermic. With a Born Harbour cycle, there will be one clear direct route. So it involves only one step from going from your reactants to your products. It's in a Born Harbour cycle, it's always the enthalpy change of formation. So some people find that a little bit easier than with Hess cycles, for example. And of course, there is an indirect route. Now this route can be very, very long. So it involves changing the elements from their standard states to their gaseous ions before forming the compound. And there's quite a few steps involved but we'll have a look at all of those. The definitions will come into play there. Here's a Born Harbour cycle using sodium chloride. So we've got the formation. Something I always do is I always know where the start is because two arrows are pointing away. And I always know where the end is because it's wherever I've got two arrows pointing to. So I've got a clear shortcut here. I could either just go from, from the start to the finish through this direct route, which is the end of a change of formation. And you can see I've got my elements from the standard states forming one mould of a compound. Or I can take this really long-winded route up and down. I still go from the start to the end. And Hess's law tells me that the overall enthalpy change is going to be the same value. Looking at this indirect route, first of all, I've, I know where to start because so I've got two arrows pointing away. Uh, so I'm going to move upwards and this is the enthalpy of atomization of chlorine. This is why the definitions are really important because you can actually see what's happening. We have got our chlorine here in its gaseous state, uh, but still diatomic, and it's being split up into its um, atoms in its gaseous form. So this number is a value that's given to us, so plus 122. Then we've got the atomization of sodium. It doesn't really matter which order you do those two in, but of course we've atomized chlorine. Now we've got to atomize sodium. Again, it is an endothermic value. Then we've got our first ionization energy. So atomize first, then do your ionization energies. So our first ionization energy of sodium, that is again endothermic. We don't need to memorize the numbers, of course. They will give us the numbers, but we do need to memorize you know, what order we're doing this in. So again, check your definitions. I'm taking uh, one mole of my atoms and I'm forming one mole of gaseous ions from it. Then I've got my first electron affinity. Remember that our first electron affinity is going to be exothermic because it's more stable gaining that electron. And so it's going to give off energy. So minus 349. And then finally, we've got our lattice enthalpy of formation. So our definition, we've got our gaseous ions forming one mole of our solid ionic compound. Here is an example of a Born Harbor cycle with magnesium chloride. So it's a little bit different because it's MgCl2. So there's a few extra things we need to think about here. We've got Born Harbor cycles involving group two elements are slightly different and a few more steps are involved, but as long as you've learned your definitions, you'll be fine. So the process of working out the lattice enthalpy of formation is the same for group one elements, 
but we've just got a few extra additions. The atomization of chlorine needs to be doubled because it's MgCl2. It's here. So I've actually got two of these that I need to atomize. There are two moles of chlorine atoms, chloride ions, sorry, in each mole of magnesium chloride. That also means that the second ionization energy of magnesium needs to be added. It's got to be ionized twice. You've got to do your first to get Mg plus, and then you need to ionize it again or take another electron off to make an Mg two plus ion, because group two metals are going to form a two plus charged ion. Our first electron affinity of chlorine needs to be doubled because chlorine, our atom Cl, gaseous, needs to have, we've got two moles of those and each one needs to have an electron added. So you've got to double that value. So we can see this in practice, the atomization enthalpy of chlorine at times two because I've got two moles being formed. Remember the definition of the atomization of um, enthalpy of atomization is to form one mole. So we need to double that value because we've got two of those being made and we, we need to ionize our magnesium once and then again. And then our electron affinity, we're not making a two minus ion, we're just making two one minus ions. So we're still using our value for the first electron affinity, but we're doubling it because we've got two moles being formed. So we need to double that value. And then we've got our formation. Remember that the second ionization energy does not always mean the energy required to remove two electrons but it's the energy required to move the second electron when the first has already been removed. And those two values are often different. It can be harder to remove the second compared to the first. So the value can, the magnitude of value can increase. Therefore, in order to calculate the energy that needs to be put in to form a plus two ion for magnesium is the addition of both the first and the second, those values would be slightly different, so we add them together. And you could see that on our Born Harbour cycle.